Um, oh well. Today is our Wednesday, June the 7th, 2017 at 7.35, and this is our regular commission meeting. For the invocation, Ms. Aguilar. Thank you, please rise. Let's bow our head this evening and pray tonight to our Lord for leadership, for guidance, for discernment, and thank God for the many blessings, for the privilege of faith, family, and friends. We pray for our world leaders so that they can make decisions that have a positive impact and rewards with good government as we prepare in leaving a better tomorrow for our future generations. We pray for all those residents who are ill or frail or both and ask that your presence fill their void left by those that are lonely. We pray for our military personnel, law enforcement and firefighters and all those who labor to return to their homes safely and ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Deputy Chief, for the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Roll call. Mayor Eduardo Mujina. Present. Vice Mayor Candida Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Juan Blanes. Present. Commissioner Rhonda Rodriguez. Present. Commissioner Luciano Suarez. Yes. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Next item, please. Item four, presentation of minutes for approval for May 17, 2017, regular city commission meeting. Motion. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes, next item. Item five, report of the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the city commission. I have a written report. It's dated June 6, 2017. The first item in my report um, <coughs> is basically an update on all the grant applications that we have either in the works right now or have submitted on behalf of the city of West Miami. The first one would fall under Commissioner Blanca's committee a COPS grant application that the uh, Mr. Ruano is working on at this time, which is uh, would be applied uh, through the uh, Department of Justice. As you know, we each and every year apply for funds. Fortunately, in this case, we are not we have not been awarded because our criminal stats are not there, which is in turn really good news for the city. However, this year we feel that we are in a better position because of the way that the grant is structured. And so we have talked to Mr. Ruano and uh, because of federal provisions now that are written into the criteria for the grant, uh, they've opened up the window for community policing program that would include the hiring of veteran, uh, pre uh, veterans uh, preference, correct uh, Deputy Chief? And so that would open up uh, perhaps a small window for, for DOJ to look at the city with a different set of eyes. So uh, that application will be submitted uh, to DOJ and you will receive a copy of that application. Uh, the next item in my report under uh, the committee chaired by Commissioner Blanes is a grant that is um, has been submitted to the state of Florida for what they call a LWCF, which is a land and water conservation fund. The city of West Miami has applied for a grant uh, after having a uh, recreation <coughs> advisory committee that identified a list of capital improvement projects for the city of West Miami for a total project amount of $400,000 and we pledged $200,000. We have submitted a list of actually the, a copy of the application and the projects include, um, Mr. Blanis, if I may go right to the list, the list of projects that have been identified by the Recreation uh, Committee has been the re of the outfield. Right now there's a portion of the field that's being restored. Now we're looking to um, Resod the uh, outfield, resurface the basketball courts and replace the baskets and the backboards, replace the tennis court windscreens, poles and nettings, installation of picnic benches, the new children's playground at the West Miami <coughs> Recreation Center, 
the purchase of new aluminum bleachers and replace the light poles behind home plate and change the field lighting to LED lighting to comply with energy efficient lighting for the, for the city. So if funded, that requires a match of $200,000 for a total project of $400,000. We have submitted this grant. We have been in touch with the state. There have been requests for additional information from the state, and we're working with Tamika Bass. And uh, in the past, she has supervised projects for the city, so we're, we're, we actually have a real good communication with the state, and we're hopeful that this grant will come through maybe not funded at the level that we're asking for, but maybe we can uh, get our, our name uh, you know, out there and, and hopefully we can be the recipient of the grants. The uh, next grant application is uh, another grant under the committee uh, chaired by Commissioner Blanca, Vice Mayor Blanca, I am sorry, for a $5,000 grant to be funded for the use of our police department on AED and life-saving equipment so that we can have, every police vehicle can have life-saving equipment, which is, um, which is as you know, Commissioner Blanes is, is paramount of paramount importance here um, in our community, especially in a community where we have such a large concentration of senior citizens. So um, we will keep you um, informed as the process continues. We've given you a copy of these grant applications so you could browse through them and get acquainted with the dollars that are involved. This $5,000 grant does not require a match. And last but not least, uh, at the mayor's uh, request, we met with Robert Ruano, uh, Mr. Pena and I. Um, we find that uh, based on uh, information provided to us by the mayor, the city may be eligible to receive funding under a, um, under a grant issued by the Department of Economic Opportunity, which we know formally as the state agency formerly known as DCA, Department of Community Affairs, and all these names are changing. Uh, the city will be applying for a technical assistance grant that would strictly fund a model or an economic study that mirrors the city's comprehensive plan and ties in with the economic development piece incorporated <laughs> in the last comp plan. This model will assist us in identifying and collecting data on inventory of areas and parcels and an asset study of our commercial areas. If awarded, uh, the funding amount ranges from $15,000 to $40,000 depending on how we score in the, in the uh, priorities or the, the eligibility criteria set forth by the grant. So once the grant is, is uh, completed by Mr. Ruano at providing all the data that we're supplying to him, we, we will forward to you a copy so uh, you can follow along and ask any questions that you may deem necessary. The next item on my report is the West Miami Recreation Center as of the date as of the writing of my report as of Monday, June 5th, um, the city had received 117 applications for summer camp for kids that will be attending summer camp. And I asked John Michael to break those numbers down for us to see how many are residents and non-residents. We have 66 city residents. <coughs> we have 29 non-residents. We have seven children of employees who have, who, who have registered their kids, 10 grandparents who have registered their grandchildren, uh, five vouchers through the District 6 office, and those are allotted every year with a maximum of, of 20 a year, for a, a total 117 um, applications. I'm sure that by the end of this week, that number may reach 150, 175 easily. Um, Father's Day celebration is scheduled to take place um, on June 16th at noon. We are assisting Commissioner Luciano Suarez um, with the preparations for the Father's Day celebration at the West Miami Community Center. We have sent out a calendar to the members of the City Commission, to <coughs> District 6 Commissioner Rebecca Sosa, our State Representative and our State Senator, and hopefully everyone can join 
the West Miami Commission, um, obviously in celebration of Father's Day. July 4th, 2017, we are currently working with uh, the mayor on the finishing touches for the city of West Miami 2017, 4th of July. Uh, the flyer will probably be ready uh, for your uh, review by Monday of next week, and hopefully we'll go to the printer so that we can start notifying the residents of our 4th of July events. The, um, as, as per our previous reports and conversations, the 4th of July falls on a work week, on a Tuesday actually, so I think under, based on your direction, we will be opening the park at 6 p.m. We are pricing the, the bounce houses right now. We have secured the firework display as approved by the West Miami City Commission. The music and the hamburgers and hot dogs will be donated by Greater Miami. We're in the process of securing all that. And we intend to have all these commitments by Friday of this week. Um, and again, we will be sending out the flyers probably a week, a week or 10 days prior to the 4th. Um, the city website, we continue to upload information to the city website. Our audit for fiscal year ended September 30th, 2016. Should be up on the site already under the uh, finance department. And last but not least, which is not contemplated in the report, however, you have been addressed by uh, via email is the property appraiser's office has delivered the June 1st taxable value estimates. Based on those estimates, the city is working in the budget direction now. We will get firm confirmation of what the numbers are going to be on July 1st, pursuant to the statutes, and they will deliver a formula which will help us derive our 95% <laughs> based, based on trim, which is truth and millage. Um, it is not a secret that the city should be doing much better this coming year from a budget standpoint. And of course, and per your direction, our, our, after taking care of, of, of service and putting money back into the community where service is needed, our main focus is putting money back into reserves. We need to build our reserves so that we can be prepared for next year, which uh, we're looking already as, at a referendum that promises to pass because it promises to give property owners an additional $25,000 in homestead exemption. So uh, we, we will take all of this under consideration. We have briefly spoke to you about, um, to some of the members of the city commission regarding where we're going with the budget, but um, our numbers are not going to be finalized until after July 1st. We will be meeting with you. I've already spoken to Commissioner Suarez about meeting next week. I've talked to you briefly, and we'll all be meeting in the next couple of weeks individually to discuss your projects and, and to have a, f a course of action and make some recommendations. So the budget will pre be presented as, as uh, per the charter, the second meeting in July. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank if you. you have any questions. Any questions for the manager? No, sir. Okay, next item. Item six, report of the city attorney. <coughs> he stepped out. He stepped out. <coughs> item seven, report of the city engineers, known this evening. Item eight, committee report, report of the mayor. I have no report at this time. Anybody else? No, sir. Okay. Citizen presentation. Item nine, citizen presentations. No presentations, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Can we go back to item six, please? Yes, item six, report of the city attorney. There's no report by the city attorney. Okay. <coughs> Next item. Item 10, unfinished business, none. Uh, item 11, under new business agenda item, item 11A. This is a public hearing that was advertised to take place uh, today at 7.30. Um, yes. If I may interject, Mr. Mayor, and obviously uh, we will have to yield to the protocol by our city attorney. Um, this item is a second reading of an ordinance that, as I understand it, from the Director of Planning and Zoning and our city attorney should be 
withdrawn from the agenda at this time because the planning and zoning board uh, is in the process of scheduling their hearings and completing uh, their review and I guess listening to testimony from residents and discussing among themselves what their recommendation will be. So they're not there yet. They have not finished the process. I've been advised by Mr. Pena that they deferred um, their conversations or their meeting until uh, probably within the next month or two. So because we don't have a concrete date, I don't think that prop, I think the proper thing would, do, would be to withdraw the item, re-advertise and re-notice the residents of the city when the zoning board has concluded their process. That would be our recommendation. Uh, Mr. Attorney, can, uh, I mean, we need your opinion on this. I uh, concur with the city uh, manager in this uh, item. Okay. Any, any questions, any comment from, from the commission? No, sir. Next. Yes, I do. Next. Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Why did you go to the zoning and board instead of coming to us? I don't have the uh, document with me right now, but uh, as I read the, the ordinance 282, it should go out to the zoning board in over abundance of caution to have a proper reading and then the recommendation to you. Um, I, I had my, uh, all the documents that I have are in my car and it was raining quite a bit, so I, I can't uh, read you verbatim, but basically this is the uh, reason that uh, it went out to the zoning board. Okay, um, I just have a comment. And the comment, as you know, uh, for somebody that has been sitting not only in, in the commission for quite some time, but also has participated throughout the years in the planning and zoning board and so on, and I, I have put uh, over 30 years of my life uh, in this city, uh, I have seen the changes uh, that have taken place throughout the years and sometimes the pace those changes have taken and how they relate to the economy. And as we all know, we, we have a cycle that is very apparent. Um, I saw my father lost business back in the 70s and somehow uh, throughout and you know, typically related to elections and so on, but typically we have a cycle of about eight to 10 years and, and we have seen the ups and downs. And I have seen uh, back in the time where we were working on the master plan and we were working about, uh, about you know, the, the, the city and, and planning the future for the city, how we, mo we move very slow and because of how slow we move, we pay the price. And I have sat many times here in this board where nobody wants to sit in this board during budget time. And we've been putting bandage for many, many years. Now we've seen a different light. Um, and uh, at least the way I feel is we do this to give back to the community because that's why I'm here. Uh, but uh, in order for those things to happen, we, we gotta be in tune. So what I'm gonna ask is the following, that to please be uh, always, always transparent, which we always have been, and continue that pattern, but also to make sure that, that we don't fall behind like we have fallen in, in previous year. Because the cycle passed and the wave is gone and we gotta be, we, we gotta wait for another 10 years and so. And I don't know about you, but I just turned 60. So, uh, and I'm not talking about myself, but I'm talking about future generations that, um, I don't know about you, but I, uh, I'm already thinking, I've always think about my children, but I always, now I'm thinking about my grandchildren and the people to come. And uh, uh, something that my dad taught me is that which you always do, <coughs> actually, our, our children should do better than us. So, but if we don't prepare the fo that foundation for them, um, they're gonna be doing worse than us. So, all I'm saying is, resuming is, let's make sure that, that we move diligent, 
so we advertise properly and follow due course uh, be fair like we always are be transparent but let's move quickly that's all I have to say and I'm sorry about the long speech very well said Mr. Mayor okay I agree with the mayor very well thank you we have to go ahead with things we cannot stand you know under the tree like a monkeys okay so what's the proper procedure for this item then my recommendation would be a withdrawal at this time okay and again because uh, mr. mayor um, I know you want to be transparent and we have to be transparent withdraw let the zoning board resume their <coughs> their uh, deliberations on this item allow them to render a recommendation to the mayor and city commissioners at which point we will re-advertise in the paper a newspaper um, and by the way this item was advertised in an overabundance of caution in two newspapers in the Miami Herald and the Daily Business Review Compl correct correct um, and notices have been sent out to 500 radius feet around the property those same residents or property owners will be again will be uh, receiving certified mail from the city of West Miami noticing a new public hearing date so we will stay on top of it we will be diligent and as a matter of fact uh, mr. Pena and I and I while we were briefing you on the agenda this afternoon we were looking already at some dates for the zoning board uh, <coughs> meeting so that's all in the works as we speak okay do we need to make a motion how, how do we uh, go you, about a motion to withdraw the item Okay, I need a motion to agenda. withdraw the item. Motion. Okay, I need a second. Second. Okay. Uh, can you call the vote, please? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Blanes, how do you yes. vote? Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Vice Mayor Blanca? Yes. Mayor Mujinha? Yes. Five zero, item withdrawn. Okay. And if uh, there is a possibility to command directly to the commission on two separate advertising and two separate public hearings, I uh, will uh, advise the uh, the manager and the manager will advise you accordingly. Can you clarify two separate, uh, what's that again? Uh, whenever you have a zoning change, you need two advertised public hearings. So as I said, if there is a possibility for the item to come directly to you, I will so, I, I will so uh, advise the uh, manager and the manager will advise you. That's, that's a good idea. Okay. Okay, we all understood? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we always do this. Mm -hmm. This is customary yeah. thing in the city. Mm -hmm. All right. This so is nothing strange. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item. Item 11B: Request for resolution authorizing the city manager to participate and execute an interlocal agreement for the municipal parking fines program to be dedicated to improving the public areas for those who have disabilities. By city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is done. Um, actually, this is an agreement that comes due every so often. Uh, Miami-Dade County collects a um, parking citations and redistributes it back to cities for ticket citations <coughs> issued by your police department in people that are parked in handicapped spaces without a proper sticker and without being handicapped. As a result of that, monies collected by the courts are they, they're uh, filtered back or funneled back to the city by Miami-Dade County so that the city can continue putting them into ADA improvements. And we do ramping, we do restoration work, we do crosswalks, we do uh, anything that we can. They're not large sums of dollars. I believe this year we're eligible to receive a total of $6,000 that we put back into the kitty and, um, and address ADA issues. Um, and so by enabling or approving for us to execute that agreement, it starts the mechanism where we can draw down those dollars, um, which takes you to the next item because we need a resolution <coughs> authorizing me to enter into an agreement with the county to be able to receive those dollars and they have to monitor the work that goes into this. Any question for the manager? No, I make a motion. No, no, yes. we need to read the resolution. Yeah. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you read yes. the resolution? Item 11C, resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an interlocal agreement and participate in the next cycle of reimbursements for the sole purpose of improving 
accessibility and equal opportunity to qualified persons who have disabilities in the city of West Miami and conduct disability public awareness programs for the benefit of the community, authorizing the city manager to seek reimbursements as allocated by Miami-Dade County for said purpose, providing an effective date, mayor and city commission. Motion. Second. Okay, can you call the vote, please? Yes, Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. Commissioner Planes. Yes. Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Vice Mayor Blanca. Yes. Mayor Mujina. Yes. Five zero, item passes. Next item. Next item, item 11D, is the uh, report by the Office of the City Clerk in reference to Charter Review Board as prescribed by Section 706 of the City of West Miami Charter, titled Charter Review Board. And Mayor and Vice Mayor, members of the City Commission, it's the duty of this office to uh, report that the City Charter um, of the City of West Miami, Section 706, uh, titled Charter Review Board, prescribed that the City Charter shall be reviewed every four years to hold public hearings and determine and if amendments or revisions are necessary. And if so, uh, the, the proposed changes are taken to the ballot and the next um, municipal elections are uh, scheduled for April 10th of 2018. So no later than two, uh, 240 days prior to that uh, election date, uh, the city of West Miami shall appoint a charter review board and that date it falls on August 15th of this year. So I have attached uh, the result of the last uh, charter review board uh, amendments that were, were that, and the amendments that were taken to the elections of November 4th of 2014 for your reference because some of the amendments passed, some didn't. So based on your decision, uh, my office will proceed accordingly. It is, uh, this is just for your information, you decide whether to if changes are necessary, you will appoint uh, one member and one, one alternate and will schedule meetings and you decide whether to proceed with charter amendments to propose or not. So it's my duty to report it as, as I said and, and that concludes my report if you have any questions. Uh, besides your report, uh, do we, don't we need to set dates or? First, if you consider at the next, and we have a couple of meetings before the, the August uh, 15 date, if you decide to whether to go ahead and, and have charter amendments or you decide that the, uh, the charter must be amended at the next meeting, which uh, it can be as soon as the June 21st meeting, you'll inform this office uh, at the meeting that you are ready to take steps for Charter amendments, and from that date on, you can appoint members, and we'll schedule the the necessary meetings. Okay, Mr. Attorney, um, the uh, uh, next um, go ahead. <coughs> the next uh, chapter would be that, uh, as the uh, uh, clerk stated, you have to meet and decide uh, whether number one, whether or not uh, you believe that there's a uh, charter need. Uh, I believe that we should meet anyways, even though uh, you might not uh, consider that there's a need for char uh, uh, charter change. I believe that you should appoint your uh, representatives and that uh, it should convene. And if uh, it is not required to change it, it doesn't change, but I believe that we should uh, comply with it, uh, uh, with the uh, fact that uh, every four years we, we have to meet and uh, consider charter amendments. Okay, thank you. So we'll talk again. Uh, next item. Item 11E, request for reconsideration of ordinance 2012-01 as it pertains to loan services. This item is brought by Commissioner Rodriguez. Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when I got this memo, <laughs> along with everyone else, uh, in an email as a resident, I was a little taken back. I did not realize these times. Um, this, they've been in place for quite some time now. So I thought it best that um, we, we talk about it because I did get um, some calls from some residents 
that were a little a little concerned with it. So I thought it best that I, you know, put it on the agenda and um, we have some conversation um, about the actual restrictions. My opinion, if you ask me, Rhonda Rodriguez, the, the resident, I think they're a little restrictive. Um, 9.30, you know, I think it should be a little earlier. I mean, the reason those um, lawn companies are out there, or for myself, I cut my own lawn, um, is to keep our city beautiful, to keep it, you know, quality of life, you know, keep our city as nice as it can be as far as keeping our lawns maintained. So, especially during the summer, if they can't start till 9.30, 10 o'clock, that's um, during, you know, the hottest, part, hottest time of the day. So I'd like to entertain um, perhaps amending these times. Mr. So, Mayor. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Let's, let's be specific. Uh, we're talking about weekdays, right? Well, Monday I'd like to, I'd Friday. like to talk about all, all the days. I mean, that's why I, I, I wanted I, to bring I up and discuss it. I, 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 one, one at a time, one at a time. I think that Co Commissioner Blanis. when it comes to weekdays, uh, I, I do feel like you do, Commissioner, that uh, we need to, to, to amend that time to be more reflective of, of you know, of a city in the middle of a metrop metropolis. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we can't forget mm -hmm. that those are the little things that 24. makes West Miami, what West Miami is, is that affords the quality of life to the residents. Unlike many other areas, surrounding areas, where there is just no regard mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there isn't. And consequently, that is why, you know, West Miami, you know, uh, as we can all see that frame back there, and, and we have in the audience uh, the gentleman that uh, ventured into investing in our city. And that is why we're actually, you know, financially in a pretty good footing. So we got to keep in mind that these are the little things that make West Miami what West Miami is. And I agree with you. Uh, weekdays, we definitely change. And weekends, we need to, to tweak it a little bit, mm -hmm. tweak it a little bit. But we got to be mindful these people that uh, are in the lawn business, you know, they're they're tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they've been doing this for a long time, and I mean, when 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 we say that it will apply to residents, that we're we're going to be a little bit more conscious about, you know, their 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 health and their their, and their care. Um, yes, the resident, yes, but the lawn companies, mm -hmm. no, they, you know what, they're tough. Okay. They can do this day in and day out, and that's what they do and they're professionals so if, if it's going to apply to the residents yes but I can not, work not, with not to the lawn company i can work with that we do so have a lot of residents that that i mean i see it that cut their own lawn so the, I, I can we can the, the, we can the, work the other with that. thing is that professional lawn companies use professional equipment and in particular you know one of the loudest uh, sounds uh is the the blower those blowers that that, that are you know they're they're backpacks and these things are really, really loud. And consequently, you know, about three weeks ago at 7 a.m., they were actually cutting and mowing and blowing the lawn of the um, bank on um, 57th Avenue and 11th Street. And I, and I thought to myself, you know, here we have all these new residents, you know, paying top dollar in rent for these luxury apartments. And it's 7 a.m. and you got two people blowing with these blowers for at least an hour from seven to eight now you know i i, I don't know how, how much of that can be heard <coughs> inside the building because i know that buildings are different than than homes but i know that that sound travels up and you know to me that's a big deal to me to me that's a big deal and you know i know we have elderly people that don't work that are retired and they want to sleep till nine ten o'clock and and why shouldn't they and and working people too so Seven, let's, seven let's, is a bit early, I agree. Let's, let's keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. well, I'm talking about weekends. Mm -hmm. Weekends. What we need to tweak is the, the weekend, the weekend times. Okay, can I, can I ask for something? Uh, can we be specific? Because we, we can talk about this all night. Yes. Uh, it, unfortunately, I don't know. I can't find, I don't have the ordinance in front of me, so if somebody will help me it, with it's the date your and packet. time. It's behind, oh. the flyer. behind the flyer that we published. It's a green flyer. Mm -hmm. 
Is and right behind it, package? you will find uh, you or will find your ordinance, and, and it's it, ordinance 2012-01. No, I know, but I have 200 pages here, and I. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. I think I've found it. If I may, this just one? to expect that yes. right behind that is the ordinance, that's, that's Mr. Mayor. Right the okay. Ordinance. All right. Can we go over the hours really quick and then may just uh, come to some census on agreement? May I suggest something, Mr. Mayor, before yes. you? I think what the, the commission needs to do tonight to follow the process of the possibility of, of amending this ordinance is decide whether you want to bring the ordinance back for reconsideration. If you do, then we can collect or your thoughts um, individually and we can prepare an amendment to the ordinance by the city attorney's office, Juan, myself, and Neri. We can help you collect all the data that you supply to us and make it inclusive of that amendment, present it on a first reading at which point there is no discussion, and advertise for a public hearing. Um, I think that would be because if you start talking about the changes of the, uh, on the possibility of changing the ordinance, then we may fall short of meeting the guidelines for enacting an ordinance. Motion. Yeah. Second. Oh, wait, wait, I have a question. Yes. I, I received an email from the clerk the other day uh, that uh, you received an email from the resident? Yes. That, so that resident, I didn't see the name of the resident. Was, was anonymous? No. no. It was on the bottom. Was it? There that was an email, not an email. The city employee was cutting grass at the Cooper's Park 7 a.m. No, that was a blower. Using the blower. Is that possible that the yes. city employee is 7 a.m.? Yes, if there's a birthday. Why do they do a 7 a.m. Because the Cooper Park uh, gazebo is rented every weekend. And in order to have that ready by 9 o'clock for the person that's renting it, we need to clean it. So we have an employee so that goes there every, every Saturday and Sunday and cleans it prior to them arriving. They have possession of the gazebo at 9 o'clock. Can we clean the day before, huh? Because the people Everybody uses it, Mr. Mr. Commissioner. People use it on Friday night. Until sundown. So if we got to clean it, we got to clean it before 9 a.m. And there are times of the year, like well, before the rainfall, this recent I remember. I remember when this ordinance was done, I remember the mayor, remember that? That the people complain, the early blowers, they write the sounds, not only because they uh, retire people, because the children. Mm -hmm. Seven, uh, too early, the children were sleeping, and that, that, that's what the point too. I never, I never thought that seven o'clock they using the blower in the park. Yes. Our people. We do. How, how long does it take? Right. How, how long does it take for them to blow? The, is depends it an hour? Is it an hour enough? It could be. It, it depends on the condition of the park. Usually, people don't get there at nine o'clock. I mean, they'll get there at not, you know, ten o'clock, ten thirty. I it mean, depends. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe if we can move it up an hour, make it eight o'clock. But eight I would nine. suggest you do what the manager asked. Let's yeah. table that at this point. The motion is to reconsider. Re yeah, okay, so we're going to reconsider yes. everything. I don't think seven o'clock is, is seven a.m. is good. We could since, I never heard about that. Since since we're throwing, you know, I, you know, I know we need to reconsider. We can talk about it, but um, I'll give you an example. This is not only uh, we we're talking about, you know, cutting the grass, and I'll give you another example, which I think is more important that we sometimes we need to be a little flexible. Uh, there's construction going on right across my house. They know I'm the mayor. So they call in for a concrete truck to pour concrete early in the morning, which that particular day, I mean, the permit application and the, 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 the information there says it was okay, but then all of a sudden they got a memo when the truck was parked over there, and they basically had to send the truck back, you know, and, and that cost money to uh, a resident. Well, and, and so, so in our defense, Mr. Mayor, when we issue a permit, we issue a copy of the ordinance telling them that until 9.30 in the morning, they can't have a cement truck there. 
from what I we issue the same form to everyone doesn't have a different time there no sir okay all so right my mistake then we yeah. definitely need to recon you, you know yeah. this, is, this is all like a double-edged sword mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's good it's mm -hmm. not sometimes it's bad but you know what all in all it's good because that's what makes us different it sets us apart from all the other surrounding areas that's why West Miami you know uh, enjoys a, a great quality of life and these are the little things that, that make that happen so so let's bring it back, Madam Manager. However, we need we to will do bring you, um, if if um, if possible, in the next few days, we will meet, and we can collect your thoughts, your ideas, entertain those in a draft ordinance for the purpose of reconsideration or amendment. We'll bring it back for first reading at the June twenty first meeting. And then we will advertise for a public hearing and invite public input as well as, hey, as I have, I have customary. Do you have a record of the how many complaints has been done in the last six months or the last year? Somebody keep the record of that? I I have not received so any complaints. Record, complaints no, we have not received any right. complaints. At least my All office. Right. Uh, we, don't uh, to a, we don't have a record of that. We have one complaint, obviously, and, and that complaint. My, my question, we don't have a record of We do now. We do now. now. We In that. the last few days, we, we do. We have that lady from the park? Yes. And, uh, we have a couple of comments through our Facebook page. And Commissioner Blanis. And Commissioner Blanis. That's one of my pet peeves. I'm sorry, <laughs> but noise is one of my issues. And you know what? Like I say, that's what sets us apart. You know, if, if, you, know you go to other cities and... Commissioners, you know, you, I, I share your thoughts. I like to sleep late <laughs> on, on, on the weekend. Oh, I, I don't sleep late. It's, it's just, you know what? It affords that luxury. In to consideration of others. And, you know, it sets us apart because in other areas of this town, I mean, they're, you're, you're without a paddle up, you know what? So. All right, next so item. I think we decide. talked enough about this item. We know what to do. Let's we'll come move back on. to you. Okay. And we'll yes. collect your thoughts. Very good. All right. It's item 11F, report by the Office of the City Manager requesting permission to continue the Urban Qualification Corporation Agreement between Miami-Dade County and City of West Miami for the qualification period consisting of fiscal year 2018-2020. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of the City Commission. Every three years we have an opportunity to opt in or continue our participation in the Urban Qualification cooperation between Miami-Dade County and the City of West Miami, which basically entitles the city the opportunity to apply uh, for CDBG dollars, ESG dollars, which are for um, energy pro emergency programs, um, HUD programs, and um, the CDBG has been those grant dollars that we have pursued in the past by us continuing to participate in this program while we don't like the monitoring end of it and the, and the, uh, the, the programmatic phase of it, uh, it gives the city an opportunity to bring money from mm. the county, which are federal dollars that are put back in areas that are considered by the county low to low moderate income. And I know we don't want to hear that because we, we are definitely showcasing our city in a different direction. That being said, today I confirmed uh, with Miami-Dade County, uh, based on their census blocks, that we still have two eligible census areas where we have an income population that qualify under the federal guidelines as low to low moderate income. And so I would uh, submit to you that we continue participating in this program until such time the county takes us out of that grid, if you want to call it that, for eligibility purposes. As you know, we are partially funding the, uh, recon the construction or the expansion to the Garden Club Park now with use of CDBG dollars. So they, they do come in handy, and I'm going to be meeting with Mr. Pena and, and uh, Mr. Ruano about possibly pursuing CDBG money for sidewalk improvement to that area maybe some curbs to help out with the parking, uh, a tree program and ADA programs. And, and that would take care of that 
that grid, if you want to call it that, so that we can revitalize it and bring it a little bit into the standards that, that, we, that other areas of the city enjoy in quality of life. So we'll be addressing you in a separate memorandum. However, I don't want to enter into an agreement without bringing it to your attention. So that's what we're doing, and I recommend that uh, you allow us to continue this participation, and in three years we'll have an opportunity to reassess this uh, participation based on what the census blocks reveal. Motion. Second. I have a question. I have a question. Before you, thank you for the motion, but I have a question. This, has this, throughout the years, I mean, this, this area has increased, decreased? The, the only thing in that, the, the only um, construction or revitalization of the area, I believe, is three new townhomes within the eligible area that I think will fall into the tax rolls this year. Mind you, this covers the apartment buildings on 66th Avenue on both the west and the east side and on 65th Avenue. And I believe it goes from Southwest 8th Street to Southwest 16th Street. But, yeah, but my question is, has this decreased or increased according to the previous mm, It's data? the same. Same, okay. Most of the, the area is rental and that's why, and when you have multifamily, the apartment use, and, and obviously it's not high-end rent, you have people that qualify for housing dollars and uh, that qualify under the demographics of being uh, distressed because they are low to low moderate income in what the um, threshold is set by the government. And usually that is a family that earns less than $28,000 a year. Okay. Mr. Ryan, I have a question. Yes. Madam Manager, um, do you foresee through our revitalization of our commercial corridor that we'll naturally phase out of this eventually? The area in question actually affects more the, the A, um, A's, A category, um, the zoning, which is apartment use, and multifamily and duplexes in the area. It all depends, and perhaps this economic feasibility study that we're trying to produce for you to get a real good idea of how these properties can be used in the future if you have the right investors that come in and bundle these properties and get them redeveloped, perhaps the county will reevaluate when the time comes the areas and we will fall off the entitlement area. Uh, like I said, uh, CDBG grants are very difficult to, um, to fiscally monitor because they require a lot of paperwork that the state would not otherwise or, or local grants would other, otherwise require because these are federal grants that um, that use counties as a pass-through agency, and obviously you have federal requirements. So we don't particularly care for the paperwork end of it, but let's say we have a sidewalk project, let's say on the west side of town, and we want to spend $100,000, and the $100,000 will not take us to the area um, where the entitlement area is, we could use leverage those dollars and apply for CDBG money to be able to bring those areas up to par and, and put in significant improvements. And again, it's all based on criteria, eligibility, how high we score on these grant applications, and again, the district support is, is huge as well. Uh, our district commissioner, um, would be a, a huge player here in terms of recommending to the Board of County Commissioners whether the city should be the recipient of CDBG money, HUD money, um, emergency money, and, and so whatever programs they roll out by way of grant, it will entitle us to apply those dollars in that area only. These are not dollars that would come back to the city uh, as a whole. It's only for a, an area. Now, do I see us fading away from, from that? Maybe in the next decade, 
I believe the next census is going to be important and the next census will be um, in 2020. And I think that perhaps those new numbers will reveal a different picture for the city. So. I give my motion, Mayor. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, next item. Item 11G, report by the Director of Public Works uh, regarding the sewage pumps for leaf station number four to include recommendations to address replacement of lines and, and, and pumps by Director of Public Works. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, as you recall, back in December, that station, the pumps had failed and we had them overhauled. And in the process, uh, putting them back, one of, one of the equipment that's used to put it back, one of the pumps fell all the way to the bottom and cracked. So they had to weld it together in order to get it to work. Well, the repair only lasted a couple of months. Uh, the station is again out with both pumps out. Uh, our suggestion is to, out of the two pumps, make one to operate the station. The station is on a bypass pump right now, which will cost us uh, six, $6,500 to construct the one pump. And then go ahead and do what we've been trying to do for the past three years is to uh, renovate that station completely. And um, well, we need to get a uh, and okay, I'm repairing the one pump, and then the next item is regarding the renovation of the station. Okay. Uh, any questions before we uh, read the resolution? Okay. I, I say that today is, is, is a pretty good sign of why we need to replace our pump. Okay. Can you read the resolution, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Item 11, age. Resolution of the Mayor and City Commission of the City of West Miami authorizing the City Manager the expenditure of $6,545 in connection with the repairs of sewage pump for lift station number four on Southwest 62nd Avenue on 18th Street, payable to Pump Tech Inc., providing for effective date, Mayor and City Commission. Motion. Second. Okay, call the vote. Yes, Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. Commissioner Blanes. Yes. Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Vice Mayor Blanca. Yes. Mayor Mujina. Yes. By zero, item passes. And and just for the record, this item comes out of your sewer system maintenance and operation account. It's a budgetary item. Thank you. Next item, item I. It's item 11I, resolution of the Mayor and City Commission of the City of West Miami authorizing the City Manager the expenditure of $74,625 in connection with the installation of two new sewage pumps pumps for leaf station number four, Southwest 62nd Avenue and 18th Street, payable to Pump Tech, providing for effective date, Mayor and City Commission. Okay, Mr. Penner, can you clarify this one? Yes, as um, I was explaining before, the, the original installation of those pumps that we keep repairing were 1989, which makes the pumps about 20 years old now. Uh, we are uh, suggesting to buy two new pumps, uh, same capacity, same design, uh, so it's an easy uh, replacement uh, for the station. Uh, the, I, obviously, the one that we're going to repair for $6,000 will remain as a spare for, ma uh, for maintenance of the other two. And um, this will repair the, the, the two pumps. In addition to that, we are also seeking proposals now, which is not part of this tonight, but we are also seeking proposals for replacement of the control system and the, the piping in the station to completely renovate that station. And again, the age, I'm sorry, the age on, this, uh, on these pumps and that system in its entirety, it's about 20 years old now? That's correct. You do have to uh, recognize that this is an item of an emergency nature and uh, that would affect the health, uh, safety, and welfare of the, com of the community. <coughs> Therefore, we cannot, uh, we should not have time to uh, advertise it <coughs> and obtain bids. Therefore, uh, number one on the agenda, you should declare this an emergency and vote accordingly. Mayor, also, we are now <coughs> at the beginning of the hurricane mm -hmm. season, so, and we have the money allocated for this, so I make a motion to approve this. Um, we, uh, if declare I may, an emergency first. Uh, Mr. Mayor, also, we contemplated <coughs> this as we went into this fiscal year, and we did transfer money in uh, to the sewer system fund, the enterprise fund, 
and we <coughs> contemplated about $150,000 worth of repairs between the last two years. So we have already designated and reserved the dollars. And so it becomes a cash issue now. Uh, but we knew that these pumps were getting up there and I asked Mr. Pena to prepare for your ready reference and I'm sure that the clerk either handed these out or will be handed, uh, handing you out. I prepared, I asked Mr. Pena to prepare a, um, a list of all of our pump stations and the um, type of pump that were operating at each station when they were installed whether they're, they were replaced new or overhauled because that, that tells, uh, tells us a lot. And what's, what's the estimated life expectancy on these pumps? So we have big ticket items that come associated with running our drainage, our water, and our sewer system. And here you go before you, uh, two years later, <coughs> we, this is what we're looking at now. So just to leave you with some of that history. In addition, those are requirements also of our uh, agreement with Miami-Dade County, Durham on the consent decree for Correct. all of sewer station operations. Uh, every year we commit to uh, upgrading the system and maintaining the system to prevent sewage overflows. Motion. So this is something that we've already expressed to them that we were contemplating okay, we to do. Thank you. We have a motion on the table. I need a second. second. Okay, can you call Are you declaring the, an emergency on this end? Absolutely. So, friendly amendment, declare uh, an emergency, Mr. Commissioner Suarez. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Suarez, second by Commissioner Blanes. On the motion, Commissioner Rodriguez, have you voted? Yes. Commissioner Blanes? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Vice Mayor Blanca? Yes. Mayor Mujina? Yes. Vice Zero, item passes. Item J? Yes, uh, last item on the agenda, item J, resolution of the mayor and city commission of the city of West Miami waiving competitive bidding pursuant to section 274A, B, article 4 of the code of the city of West Miami as an emergency as a result of a failure of a pump at least station number three located at Sylvania <coughs> Boulevard and 11th Street, authorizing the city manager to enter into an emergency contract with Hydro Services in in an amount not to exceed $13,563.73 to repair said pump, providing for funding from sewer infant fees, providing for effective date, mayor and city commission. Motion. Second. Oh, is this a different pump? Yes. This is a different station. It's not yes. the same thing. Okay. Yes, the agenda was amended to include this and, item uh, and Mr. yesterday. Penal, the, the, you deem the repair satisfactory? It hasn't been repaired yet. No, but but I mean, is is yes the, uh, the versus buying a new one? Yes, the, uh, this station is not that old. It's from 2001. Uh, we've repaired them in the past. They last pretty long, as you can see from the schedule of uh, repairs that we've been uh, doing to these pumps. Okay. It's a complete different style of pump than what we use in the in the station four. Uh, these are submersible pumps, but being used in a dry pit uh, scenario where. It doesn't, it's not uh, exposed to the sewage in the station. That was pretty graphic, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the cost of doing business. <laughs> well, that's a problem. We, mm -hmm. we have a big system mm -hmm. that cost about $30 million, all right? And as you know, Com Com Commission Water, for, for so many years, we, we have tried to put money in research. Yes, we do. And, and, and then we haven't been able to, so lately we have been able to do that. Yes. To, to we have the money for that. Yes. We have been saving money for this. Okay. Because the problem with the water on the ground here is big. We have the, the worst problem we have. So we have to repair this thing. That's where we can make a motion. Okay. okay. So I have a motion. Did I have a second? Yes. Okay. Second. Can you call the vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. Commissioner Blanes? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Vice Mayor Blanca? Yes. Mayor Mujina? Yes. Five zero item passes. Mayor, I I want to go to the order. Yes, I have something I have been thinking because you said something very important. We cannot be sitting waiting and waiting and waiting for things. The city was sleeping for many years until a couple of years ago wake up and now we are going in this good situation that we have. I was uh, thinking and reading these things. In the beginning, we have this public hearing already was announced. In the beginning, 
uh, 11a. And now we said <coughs> planning or zoning board or planning defer, right? Which continued. Was the, eh? Planning and zoning board continued. They deferred because they were not, uh, well, <coughs> they alternate people and they defer whatever. Now, we have to advertise this again. We have to go to the same thing again. And Commissioner uh, uh, Blanca said something very, very important. Why you don't bring this to us? Because this is the, this is the board that have the power. My question is to the lawyer. Can we, uh, my motion is, can we revisit this issue again? We vote uh, uh, two hours ago, defer. But now I think once was advertised the public hearing. The money, the city spent money advertising. Everything was done. Do we have the legal, legal power to override the deferral from the public, public planning and zoning? And as a commission, we take care of this? Do we have the legal power for that? You have the time to uh, pay me to uh, give you my best counsel and my that best I counsel ask you, do, Can we do it or not? You can always do as you wish. You can always uh, move right now to uh, hear this uh, particular item. I do not recommend for you to uh, hear this particular item at this point. Because I think we are going to back to the process and spend money in the public hearing again and wait for, for one, two more months. And that's what the Commission in Blanca said. Why well, don't bring to here? When the deferred. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. The Mayor. Other, that's why my question to you, is legal that we do it? At this point, no, sir. All right. That was my question. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? Good night. Anything else? No. Nothing? OK. Good night. Good night, gentlemen, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ever say aye? Aye. 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 Yeah, yeah. Stop. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, yes. commissioners, uh, city manager, city attorney, staff. I just wanted to take a brief moment because today's uh, hearing, we've talked about a lot about uh, budgets and money and items that need to get fixed and renovating the city and improving the city and improving the residents. We talked about the housing that is n really not up to par in the north west side of the city. So I wanted to make an announcement that's going to be public tomorrow. Uh, we closed today on Gables Prado. Uh, the property sold to a, an institutional buyer that came from uh, Denver, Colorado. The interesting thing about that is that we're attracting to the city of West Miami, now a second institutional buyer. That puts the city of West Miami in a different map. A lot of institutions, financial institutions nationwide are starting to realize that city of West Miami actually exists. But I can tell you three years ago, four years ago, we would talk to people about West Miami and they thought it was a section of the city of Miami. So now everybody understands that West Miami is here. I think we've demonstrated that West Miami is an institutional market the property sold for $61 million. So you're going to see a significant increase in your tax rolls. As a matter of fact, the second great announcement that we have uh, for you guys today is that, um, and I think Big Tony wants to bring that up. No, I'm, I'm not going to blow your chest. <laughs> <Blow his cover. laughs> but, uh, you know, it's all very good news. Um, <clears throat> we have a, I can announce and say that uh, there's a lot of interest for the third building that's going up. I think that the buildings, uh, based on the rents that they're getting, have demonstrated that they are a place that people want to live. We're attracting, you know, very high net worth uh, household income renters, much, much higher than what the city has traditionally seen based on, this, on the U.S. Census that is done on incomes in the area. So, you know, I think the buildings have worked very well with the communities. Most of the residents that live around us are very happy that the buildings are done. Are there growing pains when you, we're going through construction? Absolutely. These are, these are um, you know, massive undertakings that take place in very constricted areas. So there is pain. There is there is no doubt a lot of, uh, of uh, cooperation from the neighbors. We try to be as, as responsive to any issues that occur. But 
at overall, when the buildings are done and even tenant residents that live abutting our property, which are the ones that really to take the, the brunt of the pain, are extremely happy that these buildings are, are in. From what we hear, I mean, we, we, we talk to them every day. We're out there and, and we don't get any negative uh, comments, you know, other than, you know, the pain of going through the construction, which, which we, we all understand, uh, unfortunately, is, is part of it. So we just want to let you know that, that, uh, you know, this is a, this, I think this is an instrumental event for the city of West Miami. The fact that we have a second institutional buyer in the, in the city at this magnitude, I think, is, is a very positive thing for the city. So I want to congratulate all of you because you all have been very big key component, uh, proponents, proponents for the products that we have introduced and we thank you for your support. I think you guys have had a tremendous vision for the city. There's a lot of money that needs to be spent in the city and there was really nowhere to get it from. I think you're now going to see your coffers begin to get filled with, you know, property tax and I'll let Tony do the second part, which I think is going to be instrumental to that. So. Thank you very much. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, congratulations, by the way, and congratulations to us. You told that to the Espadron, that? You gave the news to the Espadron? <laughs> <laughs> told us. <laughs> told us. <laughs> May I approach? Yes. We're getting there. <laughs> All right, there. Uh -huh. Good evening, Tony Castro, 4949 Southwest 75th Avenue. Uh, Robert started telling you about the property selling and, you know, how exciting that is. I had communicated earlier in the week with a couple of the individuals on staff about an article that came out. I was very excited to present it to you today until I walked in and saw you had the same article in the back. <laughs> However, I don't feel bad because I did print up a uh, foam board <laughs> of the presentation because I know that Mr. Penna collects these. So just as a, as, a, as, a, as a motion of our gratitude, I went ahead and printed this for him. Uh, but on the serious side, I wanted to talk to, to you about, about this a little bit, and I'm sure you all read the article. Mm -hmm. The article was a little convoluted, but at the end of the day, if you start looking at the information the article said, you guys came in as number one in all of South Florida. This isn't Miami-Dade County. This isn't including Palm Beach County. This is all of South Florida. Your city came in number one for year over year percentage growth in, in your tax assessment base. And that's with new construction projects coming on. So that, that'd be on, on, on your little schedule, the last column. So you, you came in 28% higher than 2016 tax base. That's not including the new building that's under construction, uh, the, the second phase of Gables Gate Tower. That's not included here. So when that hits next year, that'll be yet another increase. So this, this will continue to get better and better. Um, even without the new construction, which was Prado, that's listed here in this, this uh, third column, I guess, you actually came in number two in what they call organic growth. So I think that was phase one of the 67th Avenue project coming in that hit that. And then you had the construction, the 55 million for Prado come in and that's where you come in as number one. But you actually came in number one overall with the new construction and number two in the whole area excluding that construction. And again, I, I, I mean, I'm standing here not to uh, hammer this point, but more to thank everybody because this, this has been a matter of vision. I, you know, I've been around here since 13 or so, speaking, you know, in front of you with Robert, and we've been through, you know, a lot of conversations. There's been a lot of uh, hard work. There's been a lot of convincing. There's been a lot of talking to residents, and I think you all should really, really tip the hat to yourselves for the great job, the vision, and, and especially the courage. Because, you know, at times it has gotten taxing, but definitely the courage 
to push along because this is going to be the future of the city. This is going to be the next 70 years of the city, which, by the way, that was a fantastic celebration in the park. But this is going to be your future. This is going to be the start. Businesses are going to follow. When you have a concentration of people, businesses are going to start following. And this is how you're going to grow your city. And your residents will. I mean, they don't see it today, but your residents will in 10 years realize all these businesses popping up are helping them. And this is just going to drive your property values up. And plus, you know, help, as, as Robert said, help with the uh, with the with, with the budgetary items that that your city needs because it is 70 years old and you need infrastructure so this is part of growing again thank you each each and every single one of you uh for for all the help over these years and congratulations thank, thank you very much as long as you're quiet oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not dusty no dust tony that is a nice board thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you see? He loves it. I okay. can't even move away from the podium. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mr. Pena loves all these uh, exhibits. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, in that note. Got a journey. Yeah. In that happy note, uh, all in favor okay. of adjourning? <laughs> Say aye. 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 All right, good night. Good night. <laughs>